Hello YouTube, it's Ian here with Hobbies and Man once again, and today we're going to be doing a review for Film Red, for One Piece Film Red. And uh, I'm a little bit late to the party, I didn't get to watch the movie until Sunday, uh, two days after it uh, premiered, or three days after it premiered. And I will go watch it again tomorrow, Tuesday, because uh, one of my local theaters runs a uh, discount on Tuesday nights, where the ticket is six bucks, so it's half price. So I will take advantage of that to watch it again, this time in English. The first time I watched it, I watched it in uh, the Japanese version. And I quite liked it, but um, the problem with subtitles is that you have to focus on reading instead of watching because you can't watch but peripherally, per peripherally read, whereas you can read and still see what's going on, you know, outside of the, uh, the subtitles, right? So I do want to go watch it in English just to have a more comfortable uh, viewing experience, right? So, yeah, One Piece Film Red was directed by Goro Taniguchi. The music was made by Yasutaka Nakata. And I don't know if he did the music or they did the music, uh, like the OST, as well as Uta's songs, or if they just did one or the other. I'm not sure. Uh, I know Uta was, uh, the music part of Uta was performed by Ado. I don't know who they are, like I don't really know them that much, but I know they're a Japanese idol that's up and coming. And the screenplay was uh, made by Sutomu uh, Kuroiwa, but of course uh, Oda did help a lot with this movie. So yeah, um, this is a spoiler review, so if you don't want spoilers, click away. Um, but ge generally speaking, this movie is basically film gold plus stampede and then you have an idol. That's more or less the kind of vibe that it has. Um, as in the setting and style is very film gold-esque, whereas the plot line and the kind of character developments and stuff is more in line with Stampede. I also wanna say that um, it's kind of an interesting movie in the sense that it is not really a musical, but it does feature a lot of music in it. So there's, you know, in the last, in the first 20 to 40 minutes, the first third of the movie, I think there's like five songs. Uh, the songs do become uh, like less, uh, less frequent as the movie goes on, but they do still happen. And uh, I would say that there's about five different songs uh, and like eight performances. I don't remember off the top of my head or like, I don't remember exactly, but off the top of my head, I think there's five songs and about eight performances. And that means that some of the songs are repeated for emphasis or for uh, the thematic element that they feature, right? So there's this song that Uta sings as a kid and then she sings it as an adult at the end of the movie. There's this song that she sings at the beginning and then midway through the movie and, you know, stuff like that. My favorite song was either the third or fourth. Um, uh, I, I don't know which one because one of them was more of a rock, grungy kind of like, uh, like, goth pop kind of thing i guess i don't know what to call it like it wasn't really evanescence but it wasn't really like proper hardcore rock like hailstorm it was something like in the middle of that and but you know still japanese uh and then there was another one that was a little bit more like hip hoppy. so there was kind of like rap in the in the uh in the song and i quite like those two i didn't really love all the other ones like a lot but i did like every single song that was featured and i do think that the music uh, like as in the performance of the music was really well done. Ado did a great job with it. The one thing is that her voice doesn't match the voice actors for Uta. And I don't love that. But I also like I understand the point of it. Like you can't have an idol also do voice acting if she's not actually good at it. So you have to get an actual voice actor to do it. So I definitely understand like why it happened. But it is one thing that I don't really love about these types of movies is that sometimes they can't get singers uh to do it and so <laughs> like to do the voice acting so they have to get two different people to do it and sometimes that causes a discrepancy but you know it is what it is um uh, and this story is mostly about uta with a little bit of shanks and luffy thrown in and luffy's crew is there of course now i also want to mention that the, Lu the luffy's crew uh and how they th how this movie relates to uh the actual timeline of the of the story is kind of interesting because Everyone has character development up to post Wano, but the story kind of takes place after Whole Cake, if that makes sense. So everyone has their most current abilities and attacks. Everyone has uh, their most current character development. So 
uh, Sanji and Robin had their moment and you know Robin is really really like happy with her life uh, and who she's with Nami has Zeus you know all of this type of stuff um, and also uh, Junbei is part of the crew uh, but the story makes most sense if it happened between Whole Cake and Wano but it doesn't really happen then because that doesn't make any sense. So like it's a it's it's out of continuity, um, but the continuity is uh, still visible, right? And there are some canon elements of this movie, but some that are not. Uh, Uta's backstory is definitely confirmed canon. Uh, her interactions with Shanks, I think, are also canon. But you know, and this is where we get into spoilers now. She's not actually dead at the end of the movie, even though it was said that she was. And technically, she is, you know, with Shanks at the end of the movie. So, that does mean that when Luffy connects with Shanks in the manga, it's possible that Uta is there as well. So, that will be interesting. Um, and other than that, I don't really know that there's anything else that's canon. There's some really good interactions that cannot be canon. Because it would be really shitty for them to be... Uh, things that happen in the movie before they happen in the manga. Specifically talk about Usopp and Yasopp. They had this really good interaction that I loved. So, yeah, we'll get into it. But um, this movie basically is... There's this concert. Uta is the world's largest pop idol character person. And uh, she has invited everyone to her first live performance on Elegia, which is a, a country that was actually decimated by Shanks in the past. And she lived there after Shanks destroyed it because he left her there um, for reasons unknown, which then become known, but then become known again in a different manner uh, because the first time that they became known was a lie. Um, and so she is raised by the old king of this kingdom called Gordon and kind of has this, um, like this Frankenstein vibe to him. And uh, she is about to do her first live concert. It turns out that it's actually not a live concert. It's actually a uh, way to get everyone that listens to her music into her dream world so that she can create this utopia, this new genesis, this paradise uh, within her song world, then die, aka kill herself, and then through this, giving everyone the utopia, the, the kind of crazy, like, no, no harsh you know situations in life no sadness no nothing kind of thing which you know is good initially and then probably means that there's no real meaning to anything if you don't have harshness to offset the good stuff and stuff like that so you know that is kind of a thing that she uh has to deal with throughout the you know movie which is interesting uh luffy of course shows up to watch this concert and uh after her first song he ends up on the um on the stage with her to see who she is and he's like oh i knew it you are uta and then she's like who the hell are you and then they have their moment where they recognize each other and they realize that they're uh you know basically siblings and you know this whole thing where you get their backstory if you watch the uta episodes of the anime you'll probably already know what's going on but if you haven't it's not a problem because the movie make sure to highlight the very important parts of those episodes in the movie itself, uh, which is really good. I, I, I really appreciated that. So um, let's see what else happens. Uh, eventually, Uta tells Luffy to stop being a pirate and that they can play games and be together forever. Uh, and he's like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I really appreciate you. I like you. You're my best friend or whatever. But um, I still want to do what I want to do. And so he tries to go away. And this is where the conflict starts. And so pirates... Um, <clears throat> In this case, the, the Straw Hat crew, plus some of uh, Big Mom's pirates, like Oven and Brulee. And uh, Sword, Kobe and Hamapo. And of course, CP0, in this case, just Blue Note and Khalifa, uh, show up to, um, you know, battle Uta uh, in this song world. And uh, as this is happening inside the song world, uh, Shanks is in the real world, making his way to Elegia so that he can... Uh, try to to stop Uta before she unleashes Top Musica, which is this um, this evil, uh, almost like fairy tale esque villain. It reminds me a lot of like the Seraph uh, demons, uh, like uh, Lullaby and stuff from Fairy Tale. If you guys have ever seen that or read that, 
um, which I thought was fun. And, um, and so that's the initial like 20, 30 minutes of the movie. Then the next 20, 30, you know, 40 minutes of the movie are basically this cat and mouse game between Uta and all of the people that were against her. Uh, Luffy, Bartolomeo, uh, Law, Beppo, Gordon, you know, all of these people are kind of running around trying to get away from Uta. And then eventually, um, everyone else on the Straw Hat crew was stuck on these uh, musical bar scheme things. And um, Bluno and uh, and Kobe show up using his Thordor fruit. And they're like, hey man, you have to just sing the, the thing. You have to sing the... Uh, the notes that correspond to their heads and so uh brooke does that and he releases everyone that is you know going to be part of the team uh and it's good and it's fun there's a little bit of a joke there with uh brooke being underneath nami and so you can finally see nami's panties which i thought was kind of funny i, I think a lot of people laughed in the movie theater um uh, about that because it, it i don't know it's just funny when brooke does it because he doesn't do it that often but when sanji does stuff like that it's really really annoying right so i don't know maybe that's a double standard i don't know <laughs> but um he he does that and then he finally frees everyone and so robin is now the main character of this group because she needs to be able to figure out the um the the lore of the story so that we can get the the big climactic battle at the end right so they dive down into the um into the 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 deepest levels of the castle they find the ancient library uh and then of course they manage to figure out what the hell top musica is how to get rid of it what to deal with it you know all of the different things and um then um they make a game plan. And so they're gonna go battle Uta, but Uta have been eating these wake-wake mushrooms. And so she's staying awake and that's actually also causing her irritation and um, and, and uh, mood swings and stuff like that. So basically it's like really shitty coffee because I'm pretty sure that coffee also gives you like anxiety and mood swings and makes you angry and stuff like that if you drink a lot of it, um, um, which I think is interesting. And so they make their game plan. They go fight her. Uta and Luffy are having a confrontation. Luffy doesn't want to hit her and hurt her, but he still manages to do something to, to try to stop her. Eventually, Gordon tells Uta the truth, that Uta initially unleashed Top Musica as a child, and she destroyed all of Elegia, and then Shanks actually took the blame so that she wouldn't have to deal with that. But uh, actually, Uta did figure it out by herself eventually, but she still wanted to go through with her plan because it was like her way of atoning for the issue. But she's actually just being more villainous than if she hadn't known. So it's kind of interesting. And eventually we get to the big final confrontation. So Uta has been absorbed by Top Musica. She is this musical demon inside the music world and outside the music world. And it is a link between the two, two, the two worlds, right? So what, hap what needs to happen is that everything has to be done in tandem at the same time, inside and outside. Luffy is going to be the main attacker on the inside and Shanks is gonna be the main attacker on the outside. Katakuri shows up and he explains the way that this can happen, which is that due to advanced observation hockey, you can see through the the barrier of the of the music world uh and connect with someone over there and see what's happening through their eyes luffy and shanks do this mildly but who really shines in this uh, application of observation hockey are yasap and usap and i loved this part of the story this whole section here where uh uta figures out the issues uh and she admits to to her problems and then usap and yasap and then the ending where you know Shanks is just a dad for Uta really made me emotional. I definitely teared up in the movie theater and I was trying to like, you know, rub my eyes uh, so I wouldn't miss anything. But also uh, it was really good. I really liked it. I thought it was a really emotional kind of uh, gut punchy kind of thing. And Usopp and Yasop was a really fun thing. But again, I really wish that their first major interaction, their first like uh, connection was in the manga and not in a non-canon movie. But again, uh, if they manage to make it better in the manga, then it's fine. I just think that 
it kind of sucks that this happened in this non-canon movie, but it was still really cool. And it makes sense that they would pick Yasop and Usopp instead of Luffy and Shanks, because the Luffy and Shanks moment is the big climax of the story of the manga, right? So it makes sense that they wouldn't play it up in the movie. So I get it, but you know, it kind of sucks. I would have really, really would have loved that resolution or that kind of connection to happen in the manga in a canon setting, but it is what it is. And so they end the fighting and of course they win. It was really good. I really liked the last 30 to 40 minutes of the movie. Um, it was really great. I liked the whole movie. I don't necessarily think I liked it more than Stampede or Film Z. So I think it would be the third uh, best movie. So if I, if, if, based on my video that I did a few weeks ago on um, the best One Piece movies, it would be Stampede Z, Red, Gold, then Strong World. And Red is actually a better written movie than Stampede. Uh, not necessarily better than Z, but I think it's definitely better written than Stampede. But Stampede is just a lot more fun to me. And it doesn't really have things that are maybe not as um, as enjoyable multiple times in a row, right? So um, I like musical things. I, you know, I grew up watching Disney movies and stuff like that. I really like the Hamilton musical. So I understand the appeal of musicals, but I don't really want to sit down to watch a movie that's a musical all the time. And I really think that that affects the rewatchability of Red, whereas Stampede is just a fun romp. So it's easier to rewatch that without having any issues, right? So that's why Stampede is at the top, even though Red is technically better written, right? And Z is just a little bit less enjoyable, less enjoyable than Stampede. So that's why it's below Stampede, right? So Red is the third, the middle of the road for the five, uh, you know, Oda One Piece movies. And um, yeah, so there really isn't too much else to say. In terms of pros, um, I, I really enjoyed the music. I think the, the, the J-pop aspect of it was really good. I would listen to the songs outside of the movie. Um, I really liked the character of Uta. She wasn't like the most deep character, but she was interesting. I really liked that she is a canon character, so she might show up in the manga at some point because, you know, it was implied she died at the end of the movie, but she also didn't die because we didn't see her dying. Um, and even if we had seen her dying, she might have still been alive. The Straw Hats and Red Hair uh, Pirate, you know, team up was really good. I also like the um, the comparison of all the characters. I thought that worked really nicely. Um, I also think we got confirmation that at least one of Shanks' crew has Devil Fruit powers. Because there's this one guy in his crew that opens his mouth and he gets like a Godzilla beam. Uh, ready to launch and he can you know spit you know whatever that is so at least he has devil fruit powers I think everyone else does not so that's pretty interesting um, and in terms of a con I think the final fight slash resolution of the story could have been a bit longer um, there's this moment where the fight with top music ends and then the admirals are left over and so Shanks just uses his conquerors hockey but um, there was still like 30 plus giant marine ships like even if shanks knocked out half of them there's still more than enough people to you know battle shanks and get rid of him so um they had to use that conqueror's hockey burst as an excuse to leave and i feel like if the movie was 20 minutes longer that resolution could have been better or what could have happened is that you shorten the first two parts of the story a little bit you know maybe have one or two less songs uh and um and then make the last 20 minutes that are left over from that stuff be about that resolution with the admirals because it did feel a little too quick. Um, but the movie was two hours long, so it makes sense they wouldn't want to extend it out more than that because at that point you are getting into like, you know, unnecessarily long territory. So I get what it is, um, but you know, I would have liked it to be a little bit longer so that resolution could have happened a little bit better. Also, I don't think Uta died because Luffy didn't cry about it. And I feel like he would have cried about it or had a re emotional reaction to it if she had died. Because, you know, Uta is basically his uh, third sibling. Uh, Sabo, uh, he already cried for when he died the first time. And he cried for him when he found out he wasn't dead. Uh, Ace, he cried for, of course. And, of course, Uta, uh, being his third sibling, might have also meant that he would cry. But he, since he didn't... I do think that he um, that she's alive, right? So, yeah. Also, I'm unsure about the connection between Uta and Luffy. I understand that they're supposed to be siblings, 
But also, some of the ways that Uta interacts with Luffy near the end of the movie kind of do feel romantic to me, and so she could be his romantic interest um, if that ever happens. But Boa Hancock is Luffy's romantic interest. You know, as far as Luffy can have a romantic interest being, like, as adventure sexual as he is, right? So, I don't know. It's kind of interesting uh, to see that. And uh, I'm curious to see how that's going to uh, play out later on, if it ever plays out at all. But, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about Film Red. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys thought. I am going to go watch it again, so I probably will have more to say about it in uh, my check-in video or the end of the month wrap-up video. So feel free to watch those videos when they come out later on. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys later.